I'll just wait for 10 seconds if we have any delays. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, we came back once again with another webinar by International Association of Dental Students. Today is April 7th, 5 p.m. GMT, almost four minutes past. And we have today amazing professor Ivo Krejci from Switzerland, and he's going to present to us a very interesting topic on digital dentistry, which I am personally so interested to hear, and I'm sure you guys are interested as well. So I'll not waste the time, and I will go directly to the amazing Ivo Krejci, and we will begin with his presentation. Professor, please. Sean, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. First of all, I would like to apologize for the technical problems uh, we had uh, with the transition the last time. So we put a lot of effort to eliminate any technical bugs and uh, I hope that this time everything will go fine. So welcome uh, to this webinar. It is my pleasure to share this Saturday evening with you on a subject which is at the same time highly exciting but also frightening because it will most probably completely change dentistry. With the title of my presentation, how digital transformation will influence restorative dentistry. As uh, you shall be in business for the next 30 to 40 years, it is really worth uh, to be discussed this subject. And uh, maybe that you may ask the question, why? I feel that, uh, you are the new generation, you are open for new ideas, you are highly motivated to go into dentistry. And uh, for these reasons, I think it's nice to think about how future will be, especially influenced by this new technology. If you look at uh, the current situation, there are still a lot of people who think that uh, dentists will be there forever. And as a good example that, for example, implants, which are highly interesting today, will also stay there forever. If you ask me the question whether I agree on this, I have to tell you that I strongly disagree on the fact that implants will be there forever. And I also disagree at least with the idea that the dentistry of today will be there forever and that it will not change. To give you an example from a completely different area, which has nothing to do with dentistry, which, which might be a nice um, picture how things may evolve and develop, it's photography. Some time ago, I was in Paris and these are pictures of uh, my stay there. What you can see on the left-hand side, this is an artist who instead of taking pictures, just prepared a kind of an artistic work of, of uh, a design of uh, this client, of this lady in a highly sophisticated manner. He charged for that, I think something like uh, 30 or 40 euros. In the middle of the slide, you can see another artist who simplified uh, this work. He only charged around five or 10 euros for that. And it was a caricature of his clients. On the right hand side, you can see the next step. Instead of designing the clients, photography completely changed the whole situation. And now anybody can take a picture of uh, any person he would like to, to, uh, yeah, to have a picture of. Photography in the old days was analog, so you needed films. And one of the most famous companies for dental films was Kodak. Kodak in the old days thought that uh, digital photography will never really evolve and that uh, 
films for photography will stay there forever. If you look at digital photography, on the right hand side, you can see the situation where one person is taking pictures from another person. If you look at uh, the financial uh, um, aspect of the situation, you will agree with the fact that uh, in comparison to the handmade uh, pictures on the left hand side and in the middle, the photography costs almost nothing. But still, there is a person needed who takes the photograph of another person. The development of today is such that you didn't, do not even need another person to take pictures. You take a selfie, as you can see in the middle of this slide, and this uh, realization of the picture is even less expensive than what I showed you before, because once you are using digital photography, and second, you do not need even another person who is taking the picture. And uh, coming back to Kodak, here you can see what happened to Kodak in the late 90s. Kodak thought in the older days that there will be no changement from analog photography to digital photography. And everything was fine up to the moment where all of a sudden there was a disruptive technology, which was the digital photography. And all of a sudden, almost nobody needed films. So the company went almost bankruptcy. And I think that something similar could also happen to dentistry, at least to the classic dentistry where we are in today, if we do not anticipate some developments. And one of the developments which are, will most probably enormously influence dentistry in the next few years and also decades will be digitalization. If you want to know a little bit more about uh, digitalization and the influence of uh, the end daily life, there's a very nice book, which I could recommend to you, which is called Vaporized from Robert Terzak. And basically the thesis of this book is very simple. Terzak is saying that everything which can be vaporized, meaning virtualized, will be. And if we apply this idea to dentistry, the simple question is, so what can be virtualized basically in dentistry, which could completely change today's situation. One approach is just to think about, so who are the actors in the dental field? And this is what you can see on this slide. Basically, it's the patient, then it's of course the dentist, and in many, many instances, it's also the dental technician. So the question, I would like to answer to you during my presentation is who of these three actors can be virtualized in the future if we are uh, applying the hypothesis that everything which technically can be virtualized will be virtualized. Let me give you some examples from technology, which firstly has nothing to do with dentistry, but which at the end might be applied, applied to dentistry. 3D printing is a very, very good example. Most probably you know that uh, there's an increasing number of manufacturers as sport shoes who is not manufacturing these shoes by hand, by workers, but who is trying to print at least parts of these sport shoes. Adidas was one of the first uh, manufacturers. There are now also others going into this technology. So 3D printing is a very good example, especially if we are talking about the virtualization of uh, dental technicians, what could happen with dental technicians technology? Because 3D printers, also in dentistry, are now being introduced in a very, very massive way. Basically, the first generation of these printers is already on the market. It is monochromatic, so it is not really useful for 3D printing of, uh, for example, aesthetic restorations, but it is already very, very useful for printing dental casts, for printing dental splints, etc., etc. The next step of 3D printing definitely will be polychromatic 3D printing. We already have some prototypes where we are able to print polychromatic aesthetic composite indirect restorations. 
the sprinting process takes something uh, around 10 to 15 minutes and the restoration comes really finished out of the printer as you can see on the right hand side so you do not need any finishing polishing anymore you have polychromatic re restoration so highly aesthetic restorations and basically it can completely substitute a dental technician what may be mixed with this 3d printing technology is automatic machining this is basically a technology which primarily has nothing to do with dentistry but it can be applied to dentistry where at the end we are not just talking about 3d printing but we are talking about the fact that you just push a button and the 3d printer will print to you the restoration and you do not have to need to have any specific knowledge about how this process is working and how this restoration at the end should be designed because everything can be done by the software. So basically anybody can print perfect 3D uh, polychromatic and aesthetic restorations. Of course, this is still the future. You cannot buy such a system right now, but the development is extremely rapid. So it can be expected that uh, in a couple of years, all of a sudden these systems will emerge. And this will also, of course, have enormous impact on dental technology, because you will not only be able to print from the scratch and without any specific knowledge, dental restorations, but of course you will be also able to print 3D protective splints, for example, 3D printed ortho aligners, and again, all kinds of these restorations. To be able to use this 3D printing technology, especially automated 3D printing technology, you need data. So another issue with the development of this digitalization in dentistry is of course the acquisition of 3D data of the tooth structure. And if you are working in the field of dental aesthetics, you do not just need uh, data of the teeth of the jaw, but you also need data of the face of your patients. Basically, to gather these data, the technology is already here. So if we need, for example, facial data of the patient, basically 3D scanners are available but the funny thing is that the 3d scanners which in the older days were quite expensive quite heavy um, not very feasible for a private dental office now are more and more replaced by smartphone based facial dynamic 3d scans or static or dynamic 3d scans the scans of jaws is nothing new of course a lot of people already today are using 3D intraoral scanners where you can scan the upper jaw, you can scan the lower jaw, you can, of course, scan also the relations between the two. And in that way, you have all the elements which are needed for the automatic uh, 3D printing of restorations or splints, etc., etc. Just to give you some examples, a 3D scanner is will in the future not only serve to provide you with 3D um, shape data of the teeth, but it will also provide you with real color information. And it may be also combined, for example, with the data of transillumination of teeth, where you can, for example, diagnose carious lesions, where you can diagnose cracks of the teeth, where you can also diagnose the exact position of the dental core in respect to the enamel, etc., etc. And the 3D scan may also be combined with, for example, fluorescence. Fluorescence may enable you to check on oral hygiene of the patient. So biofilm, which is fluorescent, the exact location and the amount of the biofilm. 3D fluorescence scanning may also enable you to check, for example, on active carious lesions. It may facilitate the localization of restorations because very often restorations have a different fluorescence of the natural tooth structure, etc., etc. And most probably, it's a question mark, but most probably the intraoral 3D scans will also allow you to acquire data which are important not only for restorative dentistry, but also, for example, for periodontology. 
And now imagine that these intraoral 3D scans might be combined with a facial scan based on a smartphone, and that they can even be combined with some kind of dynamic function and forces recording, which might be overlapped to these 3D scans. To continue with this, a facial 3D scan based on a smartphone is already a reality. I don't know whether you know about this uh, Sony Xperia smartphone, which um, comprises uh, an application called 3D Creator. With this application, you can scan with a sufficient accuracy the face of your patient. And what we did recently, and we submitted it for publication, we combined these 3D facial scans with intraoral scans, and we found a method how to overlap the intraoral scans with the facial 3D scans. So at the end, we were able to construct a kind of a virtual patient with the 3D face and also with the intraoral information of the upper and lower jaw. So all this is already available. The next step in the field of this um, facial scanning is to go into a dynamic scanning, which will allow you also to implement function of the patient. And all this can then be combined, as I already mentioned in the um, description of future 3D scanners, for example, with enamel and dentin detection on a tooth, in 3D, which will provide you the uh, necessary information of enamel thickness and of the morphology of the dentinal core, which will be, of course, useful for the fabrication, automated fabrication of 3D aesthetic restorations. Shape matching with 3D scanners is also something which is already basically available. This is a very, very recent publication on the subject where this publication describes what's uh, the um, accuracy of uh, um, shape matching with the latest uh, 3D scanners on the market. And as you can see on the, on the table, um, the performance is already quite good. So basically also shape matching can be done with a simple 3D scan. And the 3D scan may be combined or completed with functional analysis and with chewing forces analysis. There is a very nice startup company called Asira, which is working on this technology. We are in contact with them. And uh, it is highly promising that in the future, this integration can be done where 3D scan can be combined with this kind of data acquisition of forces and, and uh, function. Now, what is quite appealing when using 3D scans with all this functionality, you may not only use them for primary diagnosis, but you can also use them for monitoring of the patients. Example, if you would like to know whether the patient has some loss of dental substance due to bruxism or due to erosion, or whether he has a development of, for example, recessions or class 5 lesions, you can overlap 3D scans at two different time points. This is already also reality. There is a software called AuraCheck where you can load two different 3D scans from two different points of time, and the software will then match these two scans and show you the differences. And uh, the accuracy of this method is much higher than just clinical observation. So you can see changes which you wouldn't see really on the clinical level. It is not only Oracheck which uh, already provides this functionality. There's, for example, also the latest version of the ITERO scanner, where, which implements also this kind of a function of the monitoring of the patient. As you can see on this slide, where you can, for example, monitor change of recessions, where you can check on tooth movements and uh, the differences between two time points in respect to the tooth movement, but you can also check on tooth substance loss. So it allows all of a sudden a quantitative analysis of all these changes almost at the subclinical level. So with a very, very high accuracy and before 
all these changes can be already realized on the clinical level. So for example, for restorative planning, all this data acquisition will be also highly welcome, of course, because it would allow to, for the automatic and basically not only in, in a dental lab, but even in a in office, in a dental office, natural 3D multichromatic restoration design and manufacturing. To all this, some other technologies can be added, such as, for example, finite element analysis, which can analyze the data which has been acquired by the 3D scanner, and which may then allow for construction of uh, restorations which are highly resistant because this finite element analysis can calculate in an engineering way how the restoration should be built up so that uh, it becomes the most resistant possible. And you can also provide, for example, uh, provisional information to the patient by using augmented reality of these restorations. Um, if you are interested in that, you may check on the web page of Kapanu, where also Professor Seiler from the University of Geneva is uh, uh, involved into the development of the software, where with the help of augmented reality, you can show to the patient how the restoration could look in his proper face. And uh, in that case, already preview the situation as it was planned uh, by the software we already discussed. And uh, the software, for example, can also shape, of course, the restoration. So uh, not only calculate the strength, but also uh, calculate the correct form of the restoration. This is a quite ancient publication on the subject where um, this publication compared the morphology of restorations built up by a classic dental technician to restorations, morphology of restorations, which were built up by the software. And the result was already at uh, that time really quite exciting because the software was at least as good as a very, very good dental technician. And uh, this software, which is generating the form of the restorations, of course, is also being further developed where, for example, biodynamic uh, factors are also included into this development. So it is becoming more and more performant, more and more precise, and more and more uh, it's considering more and more factors which are important for the shape of these restorations. This is just uh, a complement of information which shows you that uh, everything what I'm telling you is already at the end reality. It is not really a future where, for example, also the use of finite element analysis for the construction of the restoration has already been described in the literature. Taking all this together, I think that you realize that uh, dentistry, due to this technology, may change in a very, very important manner. So diagnosis, treatment planning, and monitoring will most probably in the quite near future be based on a kind of a virtual patient. Virtual patient means the 3D facial scan complemented by intraoral scans. And these scans will not only allow to give you information on the form, for example, on the shape of the teeth, but they will most probably also give you information on the oral hygiene of the patient and monitoring of the oral hygiene of carious lesions Periodontitis most probably will be also diagnosed through these 3D optical scans and the monitoring of periodontitis. DMG function, abrasion, erosion, recessions, and tooth cracks might be also diagnosed and monitored by these future 3D scans. Restorations presence, status, and monitoring, and something which is already reality today, of course, ortho will be more and more based also on this kind of 3D scans. If you take all this together, basically, we are not very far away of the fact that the clinical patients might be vaporized, meaning that uh, for the treatment planning, for the diagnosis, and for the monitoring, 
you will not really need to be a side of the patient, but based on the data which will be available, you will do all this or you can do all this, not directly on the patient, but on the computer. Dental technician, due to the fact that at least single tooth restorations, well, most probably in very near future, will be automatically fabricated, will not be needed anymore. So this automatic fabrication complemented by 3D printers will most probably eliminate dental technicians for at least single teeth restorations. For more complex restorations, most probably dental technicians will still have some important, some important position, but for single tooth restorations, it is imaginable that the dental technician will not be needed anymore. And ortho, as I mentioned it before, is a very nice subject, how all this will maybe evolve a step further. So if you look at ortho planning, there's already quite a lot of pieces of planning software around. The software for the present moment is very often used by some experts in orthodontology. But uh, just to give you an example, the software might even be used by a student in informatics, where you can check on the web link shown on this slide, who has absolutely no idea about orthodontics, but he says, who succeeded due to an ortho software and a 3D printer to make his own orthodontic treatment. So apparently this orthodontics becomes more and more taken over by software and there's less, less and less the necessity to be an expert in orthodontic planning. If you do not want to go as far as the students went, basically you can already today buy this orthodontic planning based on 3D scans through companies who, with the help of a spe special orthodontic software, will provide you with a treatment plan. And this treatment plan will serve for the production of orthodontic aligners. If you have a 3D printer in your office already now, they will just send you the data for the orthodontic aligners and you will just print the aligners without having any specific knowledge in orthodontics. Of course, all this for the present moment is limited to simple cases, but it is imaginable that the technology will evolve and that it will take over more and more complicated cases also in the future. And if I look at, let's say, more, let's say, conventional type of dental treatments where dentists are involved, uh, for example, implantology. Also in implantology, there is a tendency to take over the labor of the implantologist by technology. Maybe you saw already this device, Navident, who guides the dental surgeon for implant, in, in, in implantology treatments. And there is already one device which is even cleared by FDA for implantology procedures, where at the end, it is basically device who can perform all the treatment and where the dentist is just supervising the procedure. The same may also happen or evolve in the field of simple restorative dentistry. There is a nice example. Again, if you check on the link, there is a quite nice video on that how the dentist of the future could look. If I describe it on the picture on the right hand side of the slide, what you can see is on the right hand side is the dentist who is sitting in front of the computer. And the dentist who is executing at the end the operation is the small green part, which is in the mouth of the patient, where there is a kind of a robot who is preparing the cavities it is a very, very high precision based on the data which were generated or sent through the computer where this um, future dentist is sitting in front of. The over next level of the digitalization and uh, evaporation of uh, dentistry might be the fact that to all these technical issues, you may add teledentistry, big data, and machine learning. 
Let me very, very briefly go through that. So teledentistry means that you are not at the side of the patient, but you are maybe sitting somewhere at home or at your swimming pool, and you are just evaluating the data which were acquired somewhere else. This is basically nothing new. The US Army used already teledentistry in the 90s. And there are also very, some very nice publications concerning this topic. And teledentistry at that period of time was especially used for diagnosis. And here you can see a publication which shows that uh, this, this kind of diagnosis was absolutely usable and was at the end as good as diagnosing directly on the patient. Teledentistry might be also a nice subject in orthodontics, where there are already also several publications on the topics where the diagnosis, of course, of uh, orthodontic treatments might be done on distance. And the treatment, as I showed you already in the previous slides, might also be done on, on uh, distance. And there is also a company who implemented that into business, especially in the US. If you are interested on the, uh, in this subject, you may just search on Google Smile Direct Club and uh, check on this issue. Basically, what they are doing, they are acquiring the information of the patient on distance. So they send, for example, a specially formed dental assistant or a dental hygienist to the client or to the future patient. This person takes a 3D optical scan and she sends the data to the company. The, the company then remotely establishes with the software they have the treatment planning. At the same time, it fabricates orthodontic splints, aligners for the treatment. And the most interesting thing in this concept is that the company sends directly the splints to the patient. So there's absolutely no dentist involved anymore more into this concept. It goes directly from the patient to the company and from the company back to the patient. No dentist who is within this system. And if you look at the prices of the treatments, the prices of course are extremely competitive. So very, very interesting for the client. Here again, of course, this type of uh, system does not focus difficult and complex orthodontic treatments. It focuses on very, very simple orthodontic treatments, but still, or as for the other examples I gave you, also this system might evolve and become more and more powerful because the company is not just providing uh, aligners, it also gets the data of all these patients. And all these data are very precious because they then lead to the optimization of their diagnosis and of their treatment planning. Most probably, you know about Cambridge Analytica, who is now quite famous uh, in respect uh, to the situation in the US. Um, they also gather data and based on these data from, from uh, many, many, many people, they were able to most probably to, to get uh, some interesting conclusions. And the same may happen also in dentistry, as an example in orthodontics, where based on this big data, analysis of these data may be done. And by analyzing these data, especially by machine learning technologies, again, diagnosis and treatment planning might be improved. So at the end, due to this machine learning technology, not only for orthodontics, but maybe also for restorative dentistry and for other issues in dentistry. Um, the diagnosis and treatment planning in future might be taken over by the software and you will not need dentists anymore as experts for doing so. There's also some example in the literature on this subject, for example, in periodontology, in respect to diagnosis, this machine learning may very, very rapidly optimize diagnosis in this field. 
if you are interested again in the subject, you have the publication on the left hand side and you may check on the details. So as a conclusion, I already told you that uh, the dental technician might be vaporized. I already told you that the clinical patient might be vaporized or you may get a virtual patient quite rapidly. And when you followed my examples in the last part of the presentation, many, many functions of the traditional dentists of today might be maybe also vaporized because taken over by specific software. And the negative conclusion of this could be that basically the traditional dentist in the future will have nothing to do because the digital technology will take over. And this is the reason why I prepared this presentation for you because coming back to my introduction, you will be in the field, in the dental field for the next 30 to 40 years. So even if all this has not happened right now, I think it's good to think a little bit about it and to draw your own conclusions, how to position yourself for the future. From my point of view, my conclusions would be as follows. Most probably, it's a good idea to think about the fact that the dental business model, the traditional dental business model, might be changed. Because actually, what the majority of dentists is doing, it's just manual labor work on patients. So basically, it's a kind of uh, a dental technician who is working on patients, who is realizing restorations, who is drilling these four crowns and bridges, who is placing implants, et cetera, et cetera. All this, when you followed my presentation, might be taken over by technology, by digitalization, and by robots. So on the other hand, what will most probably stay there is the contact with the patient and the whole human part of dentistry. So in my eyes, it might be a good idea to think about future of dentistry as a service, meaning that the future dentist most probably will be a kind of a service provider who will be in contact with the patient and who will not necessarily, the primary goal of dentistry then will be repair or replacement of these, but the primary goal of this future dentistry might be the fact that the dentist will try to keep the client or the patient in good dental oral health and all this lifelong, so for the whole life. And to do so, he will then use all the technology I showed you before, but he will be the human interface between this kind of technology and the client, the patient. We tried to put all this together in a short, let's say, meaningful world. And we are now talking about the so-called dental fitness. It's a kind of dental fitness concept where we try to use the most advanced technology to not just to repair and to replace these, but especially to keep the patient or because the patient, he will not even become patient, but he will be a client to keep the client healthy, to keep it, him in good dental health lifelong. And uh, if we go into this direction, basically, most probably in many, many instances in many universities, the curriculum of education might be adopted to the situation and might become a little bit less manual and technical and more going into the direction of uh, communication, of coaching, maybe also at the end of doing business because dentistry definitely also in the future most probably will be more business oriented than it was before. But uh, in, a, in my eyes, well, 
positive way, not in a negative way, where the dentist will have to take into account more and more that at the end he is not an artist, he is not a dental technician on patients, but where he is a service provider for his clients. Thank you very much for your attention. attention. I hope that uh, you enjoyed the presentation and I wish you a very nice evening and I think that we can come to the question session. Thank you very much. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, my mic was off, but I was asking all the listeners if they have any questions to post and comment on the Facebook and on the YouTube channel. I was talking, but my mic was off, so I think no one listened. Uh, you have two minutes to write your questions under the comment tab on YouTube or under the uh, ch under the chat tab on YouTube or under the comment tab on Facebook. No questions so far on Facebook. I'll check our YouTube channel now. No questions yet on YouTube. But uh, Professor, did you provide your email? So if they have any further questions, they could contact you via your email? Um, I, I think that uh, on the first slide, there was my email address. OK. Um, can you please move to your first <coughs> slide so that everyone <coughs> sorry, can see it? Oh, yeah. So we have no questions currently on Facebook or our YouTube. Uh, but if you have any more questions uh, from Professor Kreji, or if you're, even if you, you know, watch it later, you can email him um, regarding your questions. And I have to say, Professor, I really enjoyed your webinar. It was actually really nice. And uh, I think soon all the dental field will be in the digital format which somehow at some point is some kind of scary, but at the same time, it is interesting as well. But um, I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, I have one question myself, Professor, like how is it like gonna be too scary for the old dentist or is it gonna be too easy for a dentist to get uh, adapted with this digital uh, transmission? I don't think that it is really scary, but uh, I think that um, it's a good idea to think about it and and uh, to act instead of reacting, because 
I think that the young generation can be really part of this development and, and influence it in a very, very uh, significant manner. So mm -hmm. I think that um, maybe it is a little bit over-exaggerated, but maybe not. Um, but I think if, if you are aware of uh, what might happen, you may, you may act and you may influence it into the direction where you would like to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is there, is there enough research on this digital dentistry to confirm the effectiveness of it? Uh, there is a lot of research going on, definitely, yes. In all these uh, aspects I, I um, showed you during my presentation, so um, of course everything is a little bit at the beginning, but uh, on the other hand, there are a lot of people working on, on all these issues. So mm -hmm. uh, what what is maybe also interesting within this field is the fact that uh, the development might be much more rapid than uh, developments in the past. Mm -hmm. So the research <clears throat> confirms the effectiveness of it to the old uh, <coughs> style dentistry? Is, Again, research, is research supporting the fact that digital dentistry is as effective as the old techniques? It, it depends on, uh, of course, on uh, uh, let's say, on, on the specific subject in, in the field of digital dentistry, because digital dentistry is really a very, very vast subject. But uh, yeah. if you are, for example, talking about 3D scanners and you are talking about uh, precision and accuracy of these 3D scanners in comparison to, to conventional impressions, uh, then the answer is yes, yes. There are some 3D scanners which are at least as precise and accurate as uh, classic impressions, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I mean, like, these were the questions that I wanted to ask. And I think <laughs> maybe it was uh, the question of the many listeners we had. Uh, <coughs> sorry. But we have not received any comments or um, anything in our YouTube channel. So I think if <coughs> you have, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> for your questions, <coughs> you can contact Professor uh, Kreji on his email. And on behalf of International Association of Dental Students, I once again thank you for your time, for listening, and we will be back soon with uh, amazing topics. Our next topic is going to be very interesting. You will see the poster soon posted in this week. It's going to be in French. It will be our second French webinar. And I hope you'll enjoy that as well. Professor, do you have anything more to add? No, thank you very much for hosting uh, this webinar. I very much appreciate it. It was a real pleasure to be in touch with you. Thank you very much. So thank you all listeners. I wish you an amazing day or night, uh, whatever in the world you are. I hope you do fine. Thank you and goodbye.